Hi, Jim Graham from Realtruth.net. We are on lesson four in this short series of Back to Basics. And this one is on obedience after redemption. In the last video, we talked what was needed to be redeemed. And in this video, we're going to talk about what are the requirements for a redeemed soul or one that's been born again. What do you do now? You've been washed clean. So what do you do? And that's what this video is about. What needs to be done in order to obtain your salvation, in order to obtain the resurrection? In order to walk in the kingdom <clears throat> we come to Romans 3 24 and being justified freely by his unmerited favor through the redemption that is in the Messiah Yeshua whom Yahweh hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare Yahweh's his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. And this is a real key thing here. Sins that are past. He has given remission. You came to him or we came to him and said we no, we've done these this wrong. Forgive us. And we are forgiven and washed clean from those things that are past. If you are continuing in transgression and sin, then that sin or that transgression is not past and therefore there is no remission <clears throat> for a sin or a transgression that is not past so if you're continuing in it you are not you have not been given remission for it and uh, so we know we must stop the sin that is the requirement obedience is the requirement <clears throat> now this remission was through the forbearance in other words he gritted his teeth and he he said you know what I'm not going to destroy you I'm going to go ahead and give you remission it was through the forbearance of Yahweh that that's a pretty strong word there forbearance to declare I say at this time his righteousness Yahweh's righteousness that he might be just in other we might that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Yeshua he did this so that he might prove himself Yahweh will prove himself that he is just and he proves that he is the justifier of them who believed in Yeshua. And so Paul goes on here and says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? He's saying, by what law did we obtain this? Of what works did we attain this? We didn't. We obtain it by no law of words or works, but by the law of faith. Look at that. Law of faith. See that right here? Law of faith. So we still <clears throat> are working in law of the faith and it's 
this law of faith is the righteousness which is imputed unto us, which is given unto us, that comes by the works. It's all by the works of that faith. We have faith in Yahweh. We have faith that what he says, if you will come to Yeshua and you will be baptized into his death and resurrection, that you are washed clean and you're a new man, you're born again. That is that work of that faith. If you never cut, if you say, oh, I believe in Yeshua, and yeah, I believe he did that, but if you never come to the through those steps and never do the true repentance and never do that, it doesn't do you any good. Because faith without works is dead. That's scripture. You gotta have the works. When Abraham believed Yahweh, by faith he did the works. Believing that Yahweh was what Yahweh said was true. And the same for us, after we have received that grace of redemption, that unmerited favor that he gave to us, that he was going to go ahead and redeem us, and our past sins and transgressions are washed away and removed, or removed, what, however you want to state that in English, we then must walk in the spirit of this faith. We must walk in obedience to Yahweh and his commandments. And we are required to stop sinning. It is a requirement. In reality, the whole scripture is about walking in obedience to Yahweh's commandments from the heart. Not in letter only, but in spirit of heart, in truth, and in spirit. We know the commandment says, thou shalt not kill. But if you hate your brother without a cause, it's the same as murder. We know the commandment says you're not supposed to sleep with your neighbor's wife. But if you lust after, it's the same as if you did. In your heart. It was about the heart. He wanted us, he has always wanted the children of Israel, his children, which we are, to be circumcised of heart and to receive the law in their hearts. But they wouldn't do it. They were hard-hearted. Now the scriptures say <clears throat> in Leviticus 22:31, Therefore shall you keep my commandments and do them. I am Yahweh. Neither shall you profane my holy name. I am Yahweh, right? But I will be hallowed among the children of Israel, which we are, if we're grafted into the vine, we are the true children of Israel, those that are grafted into the Messiah. And what he just says, I am Yahweh that hallow you. In other words, <clears throat> he is the one that will make us holy and set apart. In verse 33, Leviticus 22:33, that brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim, I am Yahweh. Now, out of Egypt is an allegory. It's all the lives of the Israelites was an allegory to us, and in all through Scripture, uh, when it talks about coming out of Egypt, coming out of Babylon, coming out of all that stuff. But especially out of Egypt, it's in reference to coming out of sin, departing from your sin. <clears throat> sin had you captive. You couldn't do anything but what the sin was driving you to do, what your 
your carnal was driving you to do. You had no control over it. You were a slave, just like they were slaves in Egypt. And so when Yahweh calls you and you respond and you say yes and you go for that forgiveness and he brings you out of Egypt, out of sin, what does he do that for you? To be your Elohim. And he says, I am Yahweh. I brought you out of your sin to be your Elohim. I am Yahweh. That's what he did. So it's to come back. It's keeping the commandments. It's obedience. We've got to obey. That is the requirement of every newborn, again, believer. Just like Adam before the fall, the man and the woman were required to obey. After the fall, it didn't change. The requirement is still there to obey. After redemption, the requirement is still there to obey. You cannot get around the obedience. It was disobedience that took us away from him. And by his redemption and our obedience, we are brought back to him again. <clears throat> and he said, and in Matthew 9, 17, And Yeshua said unto him, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one. That is Yahweh. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. That is what is required. He doesn't say here, he didn't respond and say, hey, if you want to enter into life, go to the temple every Sabbath. Uh, join a church. Uh, be a good Catholic. Be a good Protestant. Do Be in a church. Sign a church. Pay. He didn't say that, did he? He said, keep the commandments. And the same in Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yahweh and have the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah. And then again in Revelation 14, 12, here is the patience of the saints. Are you a saint? Do we consider ourselves saints? Is that what we're talking about? We are saints. We're in the vine. We're born again. We're sons of God, right? That's what we are. So here's the patience of saints, and it identifies who they are. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yeshua. So it's pretty clear. It's the commandments are the are the key here. In Daniel 9, 4, And I prayed unto Yahweh my Elohim and made my confession and said, O Adonai the great and dreadful El, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Is it any different for Daniel than for us? Absolutely not. Is it any different for Moses than for us? Absolutely not. It is exactly the same. And he goes on and cries. He says in 5, We have sinned and, com and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from your precepts and from your judgments. Neither have we hearkened to your servants, the prophets, which spake in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. And it's the same today. It's the same prophets. They're speaking to us today. And their message is exactly the same as to the children of Israel uh, when they were corrupt in the land 
the children of Judah, when they were corrupt in the land, was come back to me, keep my commandments, obey me, do as I say. Never, ever once can we find in Scripture that it says, do as you would in your own eyes, you're fine. You little church over here, make your own doctrine up, have your own doctrine, you're good. And you little church, have your own doctrine, you're good. In you church, yeah, you can have your own doctrine, have you all, everybody's got a little bit different doctrine. Everybody defines sin a little bit different. They're doing what's right in their own eyes and they're not reading their Bibles. Well, they read their Bibles, you read your Bibles, but you read one verse here, one verse there. You don't read the whole thing. The old and the new is not old and new. The old and new are the same. It's the same, <clears throat> the same deal. In the new, if we want to call it new, <clears throat> under the new testimony of Yeshua, under the washing of his blood, Yahweh has circumcised our hearts, at least he was supposed to have, and writes his law in our hearts. And we'll show you here as we're going. If you don't have the law written in your heart, and that law is Exodus 20, that's what we're talking about here to start with. It's Exodus 20. If that's not written in your heart, to which he added no more, then I assure you, you have not been called of Yahweh, and you are not walking in the spirit of Yahweh, and you are not in the kingdom, because those in the kingdom of Yahweh keep his commandments, and they do his commandments, all ten of them, exactly as they are written. They do them in their heart, from their heart, which means that they're physically doing things in their lives with their hands and their eyes and their ears and their mouth and their body, plus they're spiritually doing them without hate, without lust, without iniquity, without, I can't say iniquity because that nobody understands that word, without evil intentions. Because iniquity is simply lawlessness being without the law. Um, <clears throat> Then in 1 John 2, 1, and this is where we see this real concept that we must keep his commandments just as they are. We don't have the right to change them. And maybe it doesn't say we don't have the right to change them, but we don't. If, we're, if we are uh, bold and arrogant enough to think we can, well, then maybe the lake of fire is where he'll cast you and and because you've never quite got it 1 John 2 1 my little children these things I write unto you that you what that you sin not you can't continue to sin you have to become perfect you have to stop all sin in your life and we'll show you what sin is here shortly and if any man sin now we have an advocate of the father Yeshua, the Messiah, the righteous. But this sin is when you come to the knowledge of the truth, you repent, you're baptized, you're born again, and as you start purifying yourself, <clears throat> which we will show that that's what you need to do here, you'll, you're going to find things that you're doing wrong, and you're going to repent of them. And we have the advocate when we do that. But if you come to the Messiah and they're cleaned up and you say I don't care today I don't care I'm going to that local grocery store and I'm gonna rob that store then you go down and rob that store you've just committed a sin you can't repent of and we'll show that later too you have to um, you can go and sin no more. We have to sin no more. 1 John 2.2 2, And he is the propitiation. He took our, uh, 
our sins, for our sins, he took them. And not ours only, because he's talking here uh, to the people around him, but also for the sins of the whole world. Uh, John <clears throat> was a Hebrew. And remember, Yeshua came to the lost house of Judah in Israel. Okay, that's what he came to restore. That's what he came to bring back. But he also was no small thing for him that he died for the sins of the whole world. And that's what John is referring to here uh, in Isaiah where it says he died for the sins of the whole world. <clears throat> 1 John 2, 3 now. And hereby we do know that we know him who Yahweh if we keep his commandments friends brothers folks if you are not keeping the Ten Commandments if you are not keeping all of them, and that includes the seventh day Sabbath, then you do not know him. It's just that simple. That is the word of Yahweh. You don't know him. And he that says, I know him, and keeps not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. You cannot, I'm sorry, you cannot sit in your Sunday churches and think that someone had the right to change the fourth commandment from the seventh day to the first day for any reason whatsoever. You can't do that. Because you're not keeping his commandments. And that makes you a liar and the truth is not in you. But whosoever keeps my word in him verily is the love of Yahweh perfected. And hereby know we that we are in him. What? How do we know we are in him? When we keep his word, when we keep his commandments. He that says he abides in him ought to himself also to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no. Now this is John. Okay, this is the same one that wrote the Gospel of John that wrote Revelation. He goes, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The very old commandment. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Well, what was the word we heard from the beginning? Obey Yahweh. If you want to go all the way back to the garden, do not eat of the tree. It was a command. He's talking here, the commandment, no new commandment, the Ten Commandments that they heard from the mountain that Yahweh spoke, Yahweh wrote with his finger, and put him in the ark. And if any man touched the ark, he died. That's how holy, that's how just, that's how good his commandments are. They can't pass away. They can't be changed. They can't be ignored. Because if they are, the one who does that will just be cast into the lake of fire. No matter how good you are, no matter how good you sing, no matter how loving you are to your neighbor, no matter all the good things you do, if you do not keep those first four commandments, and including the Sabbath day, you will be destroyed. Then again, he goes, again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past. Folks, the darkness is past. You're hearing the truth. And the true light now shines, the true light Obey. Obey from your heart. And this is where we get into the heart side, the spiritual side. He that says he is in light and hates his brothers, even darkness, even until now. <clears throat> so you can't hate your brother. 
You can't hate those around you without a cause. That's what it says, without a cause. Um, you got to love. It's, it's about loving, and that's what the commandments are about. In 1 John 3, 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew him not. See, it didn't know Yahweh. You don't know Yahweh if you don't keep his commandments. You're not it's not there. It's not for you. You don't have it. No matter what you want to believe in your denominations, in the doctrines of men, and the different churches in this world, it doesn't work without keeping the commandments. 1 John 3, 2, <clears throat> Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What? How awesome is that going to be? That is so awesome when you think about that. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself purifies himself. You notice this doesn't say <clears throat> every man that has this hope in him knows that Yeshua kept the commandments for him. It doesn't say everyone that has this hope in him knows that Yeshua did away with the law. It doesn't say that has the hope in him uh, goes out to join a church. No, it says he purifies himself. It doesn't say the Spirit purifies him. It doesn't say Yahweh purifies him. It doesn't say Yeshua purifies him. It says he purifies himself. Even as who is pure? Yahweh is pure. Is pure or Yeshua is pure. That's we have to purify ourselves. And how do we do that? By obeying, by keeping the commandments, by doing what Yahweh said to do. Because whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Period. You break the commandments, you transgress the law of Yahweh. Now, how, tell me, explain to me, somebody, how is it even possible? I mean, I really don't know what the churches do with this verse. I don't know what anybody does with this verse. But tell me how it is even remotely possible to change the law or change a commandment and do something different other than what the commandment states and act like you're walking in it and think for one second that you're actually obeying, that you're not in transgression of what the law says. To be in transgression means you are not doing what the law says to the letter. You have to do it to the letter and you have to do it to the spirit. Both of them. There's no such thing as, uh, as spiritually not committing adultery when you're oversleeping with your, wife, your neighbor's wife. There's nothing that is spiritually not committing theft if you're at the grocery store stealing. There is nothing uh, spiritually about 
keeping the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, if you're worshiping on the first day of the week and calling the first day of the week your rest day. There's nothing spiritually about that. It's transgression. You are transgressing. Verse 5, five 1 John 3, 5. And you know that he was manifested to do what? Take away our sins, our transgressions. That's what we came to him for, to be washed, have them taken away. And in him is no sin. So whosoever abides in him sins not. It means you don't do it. And whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. So if you transgress, it, this is the same thing he set up in chapter 2. That if you, uh, if you say you know him and keep not his commandments, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. And, it's, and he says the same thing down here. Whosoever abides in him sins not, but whoever sins hasn't seen him and doesn't even know him. So if you are transgressing the Ten Commandments, anyway, you don't know him, you haven't seen him, you're clueless. Okay, verse 3. Little children, let no man deceive you. See that? Let no man deceive you. And how we are deceived, how we've been deceived our whole lives by all the Catholics, the Catholics were a deception. The Protestant religions were a reception. All of these denominations out here are deceptions. Because what does he say? Let him not deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous. What is righteousness? How do you do righteousness? Obey Yahweh. Keep his commandments, and then you are in right standing. You are righteous. You are walking in righteous. So he that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And then verse 8. He that commits sin is of the devil. Get that? If you're committing sin, what is sin? We come back here. Sin is is the transgression of the law or the commandments. That's what sin is. It says, whoever commits sin transgresses also the law. Why is it? Because that's what sin is. So <clears throat> pick this up, preachers, ministers out there, pastors. Read this in your church. I challenge you, read this in your church and read it as it states it, not by your church doctrine, but read it as it states it. He that breaks the Ten Commandments is of the devil. That's what this says. He that breaks the law of God is of the devil. He that does not keep the Sabbath holy the seventh day Sabbath, holy, is of the devil. Or you could even say it this way. He that makes the first day of the week the Sabbath and the day of worship is of the devil. I'm sorry, that is what the word of God says. That's what this is saying right here. When you commit sin, you are of the devil for this devil transgressed and disobeyed Yahweh from the beginning. And for this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Let Yeshua destroy the works of the devil in your heart and in your, your bodies and in your soul and in your mind. Let him destroy those works that you and obey. Come to him and obey. Because whosoever is born of Yahweh does not commit sin. And if you are still breaking the seventh day Sabbath, if you're still breaking the Ten Commandments, or 
if you are even saying the law is abolished, that it's done away with, we don't have, it's not binding on us, then you're not born of Yahweh. You're committing sin. You get that is what the Bible says. Whosoever is born of Yahweh does not commit sin. So if you are committing it, if you are doing those things, then you're not born of Yahweh. And what? For his seed remains in him, and he is not allowed to sin because he is born of Yahweh. You're not allowed to. Just like Adam was not allowed to eat of the tree of life, he was too or tr allowed to eat of the tree of knowledge. He was to uh, obey that, and he disobeyed it, and look what where we're at. Disobedience gives death, period. In this, the children of Yahweh are manifest. I'm sorry, 1 John 3.10. In this, the children of Yahweh are manifested, and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not do righteousness is not of Yahweh. In other words, whosoever does not obey Yahweh is not of Yahweh, neither is he that loves not his brother. <clears throat> so you've got to obey and you've got to love. In 1 John 3, 23, and this, and this is his commandment, that we should believe <clears throat> whose commandment? This is Yahweh's he has commanded us to do this also, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yeshua Messiah, and love one another as he gave us commandment. You see that it's all combined in here. As a matter of fact, there's really nothing new here because we'll show this here because this is all Old Testament stuff. This is all stuff out of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. This is all out of the statutes and judgments that Moses gave to them. That's where this came from. This isn't new. And he that keeps his commandments dwell in him and he in them. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. So does the spirit that he has given, is the spirit that is in your heart, controlling your life, in your churches, in your uh, families, is that spirit calling you to keep the commandments, the Ten Commandments, just as they are? Or is that spirit calling you to do something else? And if that spirit is not calling you to the commandments of Yahweh, that spirit is a false spirit. It is not the spirit of God because the spirit of God will never do that. Will never do that. Yahweh does not change. He has not changed his law. Yeshua said not one jot or one tittle can pass till the end of the world. So it's there. <clears throat> it's there. And us as children as sons of Yahweh, we've got to keep his commandments. In 1 John 5, 2, And by this we know that we love the children of Yahweh, when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. You know, that's the only way we know. That that's, gives us a surety that we know. <clears throat> when we love Yahweh and we keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahweh that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Exodus 20. Read Exodus 20. Read it. Read it. Read it. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. Understand it. Know it. Has not changed. Yeah, the church, the false doctrine out there that, well, the ten, uh, the law pointed to Christ. Yeah, the Levitical law, the feast days, the sacrifices, the clean and unclean hands and the washings and all that kind of stuff, all that was for <clears throat> to bring them to Messiah, to Yeshua. 
The Ten Commandments never once pointed to Yeshua. There's not a single thing in the Ten Commandments that points you to Yeshua. If all you had the Ten Commandments, you would never know about Yeshua. You can't find him in the Ten Commandments because the Ten Commandments are what defines sin. The Ten Commandments are what Yahweh gave and he added no more. The Ten Commandments are good and evil. Define good and evil towards our Creator and towards mankind. On those two hang the whole, the whole, all the law and prophets. Uh, it, the uh, towards the Creator and towards mankind. So we come to Romans <clears throat> here, Romans seven. Romans seven six. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead therein we were held, <clears throat> that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldest of a letter. In other words, he's writing his law in our hearts. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Oh, Yahweh forbid. No, I had not known sin. I had not known transgression, but... By the law. For if I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Notice here, Ten Commandments. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, worked to me all manner of lust. For without the law, sin was dead. Get it? If the law is gone, if Yeshua's death on the cross and his resurrection removed the law, then there is no more sin and the whole world is saved and no one has to come to the Messiah. No one has to believe. No one has to do anything because there is no more condemnation. You understand? You getting it yet? And as Paul says, I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Was the commandment the thing that was bad? Was the commandment the thing that was a burden? No, it was the evil thoughts. It was the intent of the hearts that was evil. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, oh, I think we saw that. I found to be unto death. Where did we see that before? We saw that uh, when Yeshua said, Hey, why callest thou me good? There's none good but Yahweh. If you would find life, keep the commandments. For sin, <clears throat> having occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. See, so your sin, your sin is deceiving you. Your sin of first day Sabbath, your sin of Good Friday worship, your sin, uh, well, I won't go into the pagan holidays, but they, <clears throat> they will condemn you too. But for sure, the sin a first day Sabbath has deceived you. And in the end, the commandment is going to slay you because you will be judged by them. You will stand before the great white throne in judgment and you will, you will have to answer for why you did not keep Yahweh's commandments and obey him. That's what you're going to be judged by. And that's why we as born again, we've been washed clean. That's why we have to obey. We have to walk in obedience. We have to walk in perfection. We need to perfect ourselves. We need to purify ourselves. We need to get ourselves unspotted. Make sure that we stay unspotted from the world. And Paul goes on. Wherefore, therefore, the law is holy and the commandment is holy and just and good. 
Can anything go away that was holy, just, and good? Absolutely not. He lauded Yahweh's law. He lauded those Ten Commandments. He, they were so precious. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Yahweh forbid. But sin, but the transgression that it might appear sin worked death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. See, the commandments are still there. Otherwise, you don't need to repent. It's all still there. Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Okay. And this is where you come back to. The law, the Ten Commandments. To obey Yahweh. To worship him correctly in the first four. To do good to your neighbors and everything. It was weak in the flesh. And it, and it wasn't able to, the letter, just the letter in your mind wasn't good enough. And, and furthermore, it can never clean you from your past transgressions. And so that's what he says, it was weak in the flesh, Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sin, sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Get that. That is what is so awesome for us. He condemned it. He made it so that we, that he condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. We can fulfill the law. We can actually do the work. We can do it and we can do it righteously and we can do it perfectly and we can do it in upright standing uh, with our Creator, with Yahweh, our Father in Heaven. That's what this is saying here. But if you're not doing it, then you don't have any of this. It's not there. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, here's the real kicker. This is, Paul's really, really got it here because the carnal mind is at enmity against Yahweh. You're against him when you don't want to do his law. For it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, and neither indeed can be. When you are living under the carnal works of your men's doctrine, of your churches, your elders, your pastors, your teachers, your popes, your whatever it's you're under, <clears throat> you are under a carnal mind. And guess what? <clears throat> you can't even be subject to the law of Yahweh. You're, you're not. You can't be. You're not. <clears throat> so then they that are in the flesh <clears throat> cannot please Yahweh. But let us consider one another to pro... Okay, that um, <clears throat> I want to stay here in Romans just for a second. Um, it is those that uh, are born <clears throat> of the Spirit that establish the law. We establish the law when we are uh, born of the Spirit and walk in the law. So, um, okay. Sorry about that. Lost my track here a little bit. I needed another verse in here, but this is good. Go to your Bibles and read it. The whole premise of this is read your Bible. Please read your Bible. <clears throat> Hebrews 10.24 now we're talking about the importance of being clean. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as some. 
of the manner of some is but exhorting what we really got to get at. We need to exhort one another <clears throat> and so much more as we see these last days approaching. And what are we exhorting? Why are we? Because if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and firing and indignation which shall devour the adversaries. We have got to obey the commandments of Yahweh. We have got to do them. And we can't willfully go out in, in sin. And you will hear people saying, well, this says, well, if you fall away, they do all kinds of things to make this say something different than what it was because they don't get it. They haven't come to the knowledge of the full knowledge that they do not get the severity of our creator. They don't get it. Once you get it, you'll never do this. You will never do this once you understand. <clears throat> but he's certain. Okay, here's what happens. But a certain, certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery and a nation which shall devour the adversary. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment suppose ye shall be he worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of Yahweh and counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. That's a very big, long statement there, right? blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And Yeshua said, hey, blaspheming the Father, blaspheming me, yeah, we'll forgive you. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit, unforgivable. And part of, the, part of the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit is when you purposely sin after you've come to that knowledge of the truth and you know you know this. Once you know this, then uh, so be very careful and stop sinning now. Stop sinning. Grab this truth. Stop sinning. Come to the commandments of Yahweh. Keep his law. Keep it holy. Keep it just. Keep it good. For we know him that has said Vengeance belongeth unto me, and I will recompense, says Yahweh. And again, Yahweh shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh, the living Elohim. Where does that come from? <clears throat> Where did he get this from? Deuteronomy 32.24 is not this laid up in store of me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make them haste, make them come fast. That's where he got that from. In Deuteronomy 2.36, for Yahweh shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall call, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? which to eat the fat of their sacrifices, drank the wine of their drink offerings, and led them and let them arise up and help you and be your protection. See, when you have your church doctrine as your God, you have your trinity as your God, and you're resting upon those things and those rocks are eating the fat of what you believe in that, he's going to judge you. You don't have any, there's no hope there. Deuteronomy 32, 6, 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. 
I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver you out of my hand. For I lift up my hands to heaven and say, I live forever. Yahweh, our creator, is unchanging. He expects us to obey as he has from the beginning. He has expected man to obey him and keep his commandments. And you cannot make up your own men's commandments. You cannot make up your own devices for worshiping him. You must do as he said. In the, and the belief out there that the commandments have changed is a huge doctrine. Yeshua did not change the commandments. He came and spoke the word of Yahweh. He said what Yahweh told him to say. He said what our father, his father, my father said for him to say. He did not change the commandments. He changed nothing. He fulfilled the Vedical law, which pointed to him, the schoolmaster. Yeah, he did that. The Passover, the unleavened, the uh, first fruits, Pentecost. There's still some things to come yet, but but that's what he did. It pointed to him so we knew who he was. But he did not change one jot or one tittle of any of the law. If he changed it, then it was no longer uh, what pointed to him. It was no longer, that was no longer the use for it. If he changed it. And this comes into, we won't go into the feast days right now, but I've been really contemplating that lately. And now, right now as I'm speaking this, I'm getting it even clearer that that um, well, you cannot keep the feasts. It's impossible to do. People think they can and they have their own do it, what they do think is right in their own eyes. They think they're justified in it. And I'm not saying that they're condemned for doing it. But truly, they have done what Yeshua did not do. He did not change one jot or one tittle. And so if you're keeping the feast days without doing everything that is required on the feast, that means you've changed it. You put yourself above Yeshua. You're doing something Yeshua didn't even do. The Son of God, the the only begotten of Yahweh did not even do that. And when he was tempted, okay, now let's get back to what we do after we've been redeemed. When tempted by the lawyer, okay, when he was tempted by the lawyer, <clears throat> did he change the commandments? Did he, This is where they say, oh, well, we just have two commandments now. Love God and like your neighbor. Well, that's not. That's not even remotely what the scriptures say. When he was tempted, get that, tempted, tried by the lawyer, he quoted Deuteronomy 6 and Leviticus 19. He never brought anything new into this world. And he changed nothing. Here's what he did. Matthew 22, 35, it's, and it's in another gospel too. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? And Yeshua said unto him, <clears throat> You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Did he change something? Where did that come from? That came from Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, is one Yahweh. Not the two, not two Yahwehs, not three Yahwehs, not a three-headed God, one. And then in verse, in Deuteronomy 6, 5, 
And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Did he change anything? If the Ten Commandments were binding uh, on people back then, and this is still out here in the Law of Moses, did he change anything? Did he take anything away? No, he quoted it. Listen, you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Now again, mind, might, uh, English translation, Hebrew, Greek, all comes out the same. He quoted it. Doesn't make any difference. He said, this is the first and great commandment. And you come right back to the Ten Commandments. What does it say? Thou shalt have no other God before me. Love me and have no other God before me. That's the first commandment. And then, <clears throat> what he, and then he, uh, and then he goes on to say, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Huh? Did he change something there? Did he change anything? Oh, I'm sorry. In Leviticus 19:18, he he uh, quoted directly from that. You shall not avenge or bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. That's what it said in Leviticus. That was the command of Yahweh. Did it change Yahweh's law? Actually, the first four commandments of the Ten Commandments are worshiping Yahweh. No God before him. Don't make any graven images of anything on this earth. Don't take his name in vain. Stop calling him Lord and God and all those vain names. He's Yahweh. That's his name. He told us his name. Love it. Shout it from the mountains. And then don't and don't go into your churches and say, Oh, we're here in the name of the Lord and Yahweh, but but we're gonna break his commandments and we're gonna keep the first day holy or we're going to uh uh we don't need to keep his law. His law is not there anymore. All right, you've just you've just taken his name in vain. You've made it a shame to the world. And then you take the Sabbath. Well, it's the same thing. But then the other last half is how you treat people. You don't covet. You don't lie about them, bear false witness. You don't murder them. You don't steal from them. You don't commit adultery. It's all right there. It's summed up. On these two hang all the law and the prophets is what he said. Right? All the law and the prophets. So, this got a little bit long, but the word of Yahweh. Read it. In it, you will find life. In it, as Yeshua said, if you will find life, keep the commandments. That's what he said. Keep the commandments. Obey. Obey. It all comes back to here. Obedience is required after redemption. That's what we could say here. You must obey the Ten Commandments of Yahweh after you have been redeemed or else you are just as lost as before. You are just as dead. It doesn't take away the requirement to obey. If you sin, you die. doesn't matter if it's... If you never get washed and never come to obedience, you sin 
you, you die. If you get cleaned up and you obey and you sin, willfully just absolutely say, I go out and sin, you die. I, I don't know how else to say it. You die. And, and, and yes, there is another. You can fall away. You can do all this stuff. But don't let any man deceive you. Do not be deceived. Stop the sin. Get the truth. Stop the sin. And find life. And if you're still committing sins, stop them. You've got an advocate. Stop them and know the truth and find life. Keep the commandments and find life. Until next time, um, I'm not sure what the next study will be. Um, <clears throat> but if you, anybody hears this, want to put it in the comments, want to contact me if there's something you want me to study, or if you have questions, feel free to ask me, feel free to respond to me. I'll be more than happy to answer and in, enter into a discussion and reason. And as I leave, I pray, dear Father Yahweh, please open the ears. Please bless your word in the hearts that those that have heard this message and don't have them listen to me, have them listen to you. And I pray this in Yeshua's name. And I tell everyone, read your Bible. Read your Bible. All of it, please. In the name of Yeshua, read it. Until next time, thanks for listening.